Hello, yes, it's the Barefoot Monk. And just a few thoughts on a rather interesting title, Monastic Tramps, my word. Where does this Barefoot Monk get all these titles? Well, let me share with you. I was never a monastic tramp, only a monastic monk. In my teenage years, I experienced some pretty hilarious goings on in the monastery. But being green and naive and not monastic wise or street wise as they say today, I wasn't savvy to the carryings on of Joe Public. But what is a monastic tramp? Well, please let me explain before you have a seizure. Back in the monastery in the mid to late 60s, especially in the novitiate house, where young men would be called by God to come and test the vocation. And we were in an idyllic spot. We were on an island, Cove, County Cork in Southern Ireland. It was absolutely beautiful. And we were right high up overlooking the the cove where the big liners, the QE2 and the Queen Elizabeth would come in and we'd see the little tender go out. And in summer, it was absolutely stunning. We had our own little beach and okay, we had to go swimming in our old habit. Rather amusing, but thankfully nobody ever seen us with being sort of a, an enclosed order. We had our own private beach but it wasn't uh, what you would find on the East Coast or the West Coast of America or Bermuda. It was very much all big boulders. Oh yes. And you needed to wear an old pair of shoes otherwise you'd cut your feet. But you know what we had? We had lots of inquiries of young men wanting to come and test the vocation. But as I became a young professed ordained monk. The former novice master would share with me, who then became our scholastic director, that they were plagued with many trying to test their vocation. And of course, he being a lot wiser and more savvy than me, he would say that they were monastic tramps. And I said, what? In God's name is a monastic tramp. I know what a tramp is. Someone who's like a gypsy or a tinker, as we say in Ireland, a traveller. He said, well, that's what they are. They give the monastery the pretense that they want to test the vocation. And then he said, let me explain to you. Do you remember in 1967 when this young man came smelling to high heaven of all the latest aftershaves and the designer clothes? And he only stuck it for a week. Yeah, I do. He said, well, he was a monastic tramp. And I said, get away. He said, yes. He came trying his luck. He couldn't afford a holiday. So he decided to have a cheapie instead. And he gave the community the pretense that he wanted to become a monk. And I remember this, the novice master saying to me he didn't want to get up at five in the morning for morning prayer oh no he was a lovey he needed to lie in he didn't want bags under his eyes because he was a model a male model for some clothing catalog and he really came for some rest and respite but I guess the old monks were wiser than he and they assigned him to the farm where he had to get his hands dirty, shoveling the cow manure, attending to the pigs and wiping the cows behinds before they started calving. Well, this young man stuck it for a week because he moaned, he whinged, he groaned about the food about getting up at five in the morning and having to be in bed for nine at night. And eight hours of prayer in different allot allotted times throughout the day was doing his head in. And when it came to exposition, 
with the incense he could hardly breathe because of his asthma. There's a monastic tramp. He was trying it on. And we had many such visits until the end. They were only allowed to come for an afternoon. If they came long distance, then we would arrange for them to stop the night in the guest room. But they had to be up at five and they were told this. And that was one way of weeding them out. But the convents were the same. They had lots of women who would try to convince the superior that they were called by God. The calling that they had was a calling from ego, selfishness, lazyitis, where instead of going to a travel agent and booking themselves a holiday, they thought that they would abuse the kindness of a community, a monastic community, and take liberties. Sad, but that's the reality check that even we need here in our little monastery. Because we've had a few try it on with me, but thank God, thank God I had some previous experience. I remember uh, over two years ago, a young man got in touch and he said that uh, he'd be made homeless. So I contacted uh, two of our trustees then and they ran 10 houses for um, battered women, but they just established one for men and they took him in and he caused mayhem. Another little lovey demanding drama queen, you name it, he was it. And then he wrote to me and he said he feels drawn by the essence and energy of St. Francis. He is a great love of Jesus and he wants to give his life to God as a Franciscan. So I arranged for him to come because it was long distance. I said you could come for the weekend and let's talk about it. So I met him at the train. Um, I think he came, ho he came hoping for a, a longer stay, but I made it clear to him that I will be taking him to the train station on Sunday morning. And what I discerned was, yes, he was very interested. What he didn't tell me was that he was a schizophrenic on a prescribed drug that he had to take every day, whether he liked it or not. But anyway, he was accepted as a noblet from his own home, his monastery without walls. He had a very good reference from a canon in the Church of England. His references were excellent. And then when he joined the community for his six months, he would come by bus, by coach from Mid Wales. And then he moved to Manchester and then he moved somewhere else. I couldn't keep track of his addresses. But each time he came to the community, it was all about poor me. He would eat us out of house and home. He would borrow from members of the community who were in employment. He would, when we had our get together for the community in the afternoon after lunch, he would be found asleep snoring his head off. And then came a time when he started becoming abusive, when we challenged him about his mental illness, which he was reluctant to share with me. But having been trained in psychiatry as a psychiatric nurse, as a young monk, I could see some telltale signs. And I went from my heart rather than my head. And I felt I had to ask him, was he on Modicate? And he said, yes, but he only took it when he felt like it. So that will account for why he was so tired, why he was, had, was having mood swings. And I had to say to him, you do realize that as a novice, as a postulant or as a noblet, you have to take responsibility for your journey and take your medication. Well, he went ballistic. He did not like being told what to do. So his tantrums proved to me that here was a young man that wanted it his way. And subsequently we've had a professed member who's created havoc. Because when asked to do something that was agreed 
as part of their ministry, they would go into denial and start ganging up by enlisting the support of other members who didn't have the facts. These are the people I call monastic tramps. They join because it suits them. But little do they realize that Jesus doesn't take prisoners and he kicks ass. Blessings. <laughs>